Good morning, dear students. This is Dr. Mitra, Associate Professor from the Department of Conservative Dentistry and Endodontics, Sri Balaji Dental College and Hospital. My next session for RA online is about isolation and gingival tissue management. Now, let us go over to the contents of this class. The contents of this class is basically we are going to see a brief introduction. We are going to see the different isolation devices and in detail we are going to see about rubber dam. We are also going to see the purpose of gingival retraction, the criteria for selection of various materials based upon their need for gingival retraction. We are going to see one important short note question about the management and preservation of biological width. We are going to see the basic techniques for gingival retraction. We are going to see the gingival retraction materials and methods. We are also going to see what is cordless gingival retraction and finally the conclusion. So today's topic of presentation is going to be isolation and gingival tissue management. So this is basically a very important short note question from the exam point of view, especially your rubber dam isolation which forms the first step for almost all restorative and endodontic procedures. So it's going to be a very interesting class for you today. Now let's go over to the main part of the class. Coming to the introduction. So during any operative procedure, it is important to protect the soft tissues. So soft tissues basically includes your lips, the cheek, the tongue and the gingiva. So to do your normal cavity preparation for impression making and for any restorative procedures, it is very important that the soft tissues must be excluded that they should be isolated away from the operating site so that damage to these soft tissues is prevented. So the basic the three goals of isolation is basically first is moisture control, the next is the retraction of the soft tissues and finally any uh, prevention of any damage or uh, uh, injury to the soft tissues. So basically isolation, how can you classify isolation? Well, this is a very important essay question. Define isolation, classify uh, isolation devices and explain in detail about rubber dam. So this can come as an essay question. So we are going to see uh, how to classify isolation. So isolation basically it can be classified broadly as two types, isolation from moisture and isolation from the soft tissues. So under isolation from moisture, we have the direct methods and we have the indirect methods. So coming to the direct methods, it's basically first is your rubber dam isolation, cotton rolls, gauze pieces, absorbent pads or your cellulose wafers. And then you have your suction devices and finally your gingival retraction cord. Under your indirect methods, so these chemical agents, these drugs basically, they are going to have a vasoconstrictor effect. So basically they are going to decrease the flow of saliva. So under this you have your local uh, anesthetic drugs. You have your drugs such as your anti silagogues that is it reduces your salivary flow, anti-anxiety drugs and your muscle relaxants. So all these drugs basically they, are, they have a vasoconstrictor effect. So it is going to reduce the overall salivary flow. So coming to the isolation of the soft tissues. So under this you have retraction of the lips, cheek and tongue. You have your rubber dam, cotton rolls, gauze pieces, tongue guards, depressor mouth mirror and your lip and cheek retractor. Under the retraction of the gingiva, there are basically four methods, physico-mechanical methods, chemical methods, electrochemical methods and surgical methods. So in detail we are going to see, uh, so uh, today's presentation is going to be in detail of this full slide completely. So coming to the general isolation devices, you have your cheek retractor. So basically when you are going to do supposing rubber dam isolation is not possible. So that time you want to do a composite cavity, a class 3 or a class 4 composite cavity on the anterior teeth, you can use a cheek retractor. Then supposing you are doing a cervical abrasion, a GIC uh, a cervical abrasion lesion, you are restoring it with your GIC, then also you can use your cheek retractors. So this is basically going to retract your cheeks and your buccal mucosa away from the operating site. So basically your suction tips, these are uh, nothing but your saliva ejector, it is going to uh, enable to evacuate your saliva. This is basically falls under the category of low volume evacuation. So your saliva ejectors or suction tips are basically used to suck out the saliva. 
Next is your tongue depressor. So tongue depressor is, is basically going to depress the tongue and uh, thereby preventing the tongue in uh, coming into contact with your high speed handpiece when you are making a, a class 1 or a class 2 cavity preparation on your lower molars or your upper molars. Then your gauze pack. So gauze packs can also be used as a throat shield. So this is to prevent aspiration of small materials or old restrictive materials you are going to remove and you are going to replace a new material or you are, uh, uh, when rubber dam isolation is not possible you are you're having you are working with a small files or K files etc. So prevent to prevent these minute instruments from being aspirated into the throat gauze packs can also be used like a throat sheet. And you also have your commonly used your ready made cotton rolls or your prefabricated cotton rolls which is placed upon uh, your upper buccal vestibule to block the sensus duct or the parotid glands duct and can be also placed on the lower buccal vestibule and can also place on the lower lingual uh, vestibule to block your submandibular duct. Coming to the purpose of gingival retraction, so we see one by one into detail purpose of gingival retraction. So, first to record the unprepared tooth structure immediately adjacent to the margins. So, for example, if you have seen a, in this picture, you have done a crown preparation. Once a crown preparation is completed, in order to expose the finish line or the finish margin, you can see the gingival retraction cord that has been packed into the gingival sulcus. So, when the gingival retraction cord is packed into the gingival sulcus, it enables to displace the gingiva apically and laterally. So once the gingiva is displaced apically and laterally, excellently you can record the finish line in your impression. When you use your addition silicone, putty and light body impression, the finish line is beautifully recorded in order to replace your label shoulder margin. So it also enables control of moisture and it helps to obtain a dry field of operation. So some, when you don't use gingival retraction devices, the gingival cervical fluid is going to come seep into the area and hence it will not give you a dry feel. So once gingival retraction is achieved, it helps to control the flow of the gingival cervical fluid that comes from the gingival sulcus. So the third objective is to displace the gingiva apically and laterally as I have already told you. So once the gingival retraction cord is placed into the gingival sulcus, it displaces the gingiva apically and laterally. So hence the finish line is perfectly recorded in your impression. <music>